is going to turn around for you. I want you to jump up and shout a big hallelujah. Let me tell you this. Only those that are alive can jump up. Only those that are not dead can praise God. There are many people that I know that are dead now. There are people that we are of the same age. Their dad, their, their mom, they had everything. In fact, there are some people at school that would look at them as our my brother Lily. They go and come back, they do things. And we have nobody. But many of them that had great plans to become big things are no more. But because God has given you the grace to be here, can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. I ask that God will be with you. This few minutes, God will use this few minutes to liberate you. Amen. There are some things that God needs to do in the end of the year in the life of people. So as to prepare them for a new and a better life. As we speak this word, God will do so in your life in the name of Amen. Jesus. Can you look at somebody and say congratulations? Congratulations! I already know you are into next year. May God bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us have our seat before God. Today, we're sitting on the floor. Remember, children of God, if I want to, I'm going to ask a few questions before we start. Because the team for the word of today, we, for those that have sent the flyer, can somebody tell me what the team is? You see, so many did not recall. It is the Good Shepherd. Can you say the Good Shepherd? Uh, if we are to ask you, who is the Good Shepherd? It is only God. And that we will know through the test that was read to us. Please, I want you to prepare your mind. I already have some things written down. I was looking at it. The Holy Spirit says, teach that. Just speak. And may God speak to you in the name of Jesus. The first Bible reading, which is Psalm 116. Please hear if you are going to read the Bible, get a mic. You can get a mic from the person in the media room and give others mic so that they can use it. Psalm 116. If you can just read the first two or three verses. Maybe the first four. I love the Lord. Who loved the Lord? I was, nobody answered except for a few. I love the Lord. Oh my goodness. Look at all of my people. As much as God has done for you. That you are here standing. You are here sitting. You can lift, can you lift up your hands? Can you move your head? Yes, Nothing is missing. If you love the Lord, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The psalmist here is writing that he loved the Lord because what? For he heard my voice. For God heard his voice. Uh -huh. He heard my, my cry for mercy. He heard his cry for mercy. Because he turned his head to me. Because God turned his head to me. I will call on him as long as I live. And so he decided to call on God as long as he lived. If this is you, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, God is a God that is responsive to call. See that man. When you call on God, he would answer. I don't know long. I don't know. May God help us in the name of Jesus. If we look at 2019, when the pandemic was actually doing some wonders in the life of America. No, no, let's talk about our own here. Because right now you don't even want to talk about China. China is in thousands now. In thousands. 
If somebody then will tell you that by 2022, nothing would happen to you, you'll be free, you'll be good, you would even walk, and would any of us think? But the Lord did that for you. The, and the reason is because you called to him. Because I know many of us were calling unto God then. Many people that did not go to church. They raised an altar in their house. They raised a praise altar in their house. A prayer altar in their house. Pe family that does not gather to pray before. Begin to gather to pray. And then you begin to hear the name of Jesus like never before. God is always responsive. But there's something with God. If you only run to God when you are in trouble, there will come a time that He will let you be. May God not let us be in the name of Jesus. Amen. But there's something that this man did. He did not just call to God alone. There was something that he did. If you look at verse 3, he said, When the cords of death entangled me, and the anguish of the grave came upon me, and I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. None of us have gone through that. Is there anybody here that's overcome by trouble and sorrow? None. This man went to the deepest part, the lowest of low, and he said, Then I call on the name of the Lord. And he said, oh Lord, save me. That looks to me like a cry of confession. That God, I've tried all the best that I could do. Now it's just your turn. Save me. I want to tell you today that if you have never gotten to that level, I don't really treat, think you're worshipping God. A level whereby you give it all to God. And you say, God, I give you the will. Save me. Every time you come to church, mommy, you always do that. Please, today you are going to pay $500. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say the Lord is good. Hallelujah. All the time. $500. God bless you. Amen. 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 We need to look at this. This man was at the bottom low. He had no friend to talk to. He had no king to talk to. He had no one to talk to. So he had to turn to God. Many of us here, we have people we turn to. Before we turn to God, we will call mommy. Before we turn to God, we will call daddy. Some don't even call all those. They will call prophets. They know some prophets in Ajashe that are on fire. And so they will call. But do you know most of the time, it's, it's still the same thing. But we will lead, no. With all of these prophets, do you know you still go to them with the same problem again and again and again? It's like Babala that will defy our room, you know. Oh, yo, da, yo, da, yo, da, Baba, 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 but this man got to the lowest of low. Many of us have some issues now that we're dealing with. But instead of releasing this issue to God, we are struggling with it. Do we want to get to the lowest of low? It does not matter what it is. Look at it. We are almost in 2023. We're still struggling with the same thing. We are using our mindset. We're using our wisdom. We're using our knowledge. We're using our understanding. We want to say, eh, Buddha, you're shaking back on here. Oh, God, you can't do meta. Oh, God, you can't do meta. It means you can't do meta. If I just, this is how my shepherd did it. He got three candles. He knelt down and prayed. If I can get three candles and pray, the same thing does not work for everyone. Just because somebody had a headache and used parastamol, I don't know what they use in this country. I don't have a headache. One way, okay. May God help us in the name of Jesus. What I'm saying to you today is this. 
unless you yield to God, unless you yield to Christ, that person is in crisis. I told us during the revival, Second Corinthians 3, read from 16 to 18. Do we have a Bible? Just as they read, let us look at us so that you know that what they're reading is actually in the word. How you are listening? Oh, go ahead. Even to this day, thank you. Even to this day, uh -huh. when Moses is it, read, uh, sit down, ma. It will read. <laughs> thank you. Ouch. ouch. Second Corinthians 3. Only ouch, ouch. Only ouch. Second Corinthians 3 from verse 16. From verse 16. From verse 16. Verse 16. Yes. But yes. whenever yes. anyone turns to the Lord. When anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. The veil will be taken off. When you turn to God, it doesn't matter what the veil is. The veil can be Barrenness can be uh, poverty. Mm. The veil can be lack of husband, lack of wife, lack of job, can be sickness, can be whatever. Once you turn to God, once you yield to God, let us put it that way, once you yield to God, because there's a difference between turning. Many people will turn to God and still turn back from God. Mm. Uh, I told us in this church, I have a friend in school, anytime he wants to do something, he's a son of the bishop. Whenever, or maybe I've not told you, whenever he wants to do something wrong, he will say, Lord Jesus, stay here. What I'm about to do, you don't have to witness this. We'll come back and we are re arrange later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I asked him, I said, why do you say this? He said, so it, 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 Jesus will know that this is not his own time. Let him stay. So that when it's done, he can get united with Christ. I said, God is everywhere. He said he knows, but there's an arrangement. Some of us have that kind of arrangement. Arrangement that tells us that when we are in our place of work, we can be whatever. But when we are at church, we will act like somebody that is good. When we are at home, we act only. When we are at school, we act like nonsense. But God is telling us today that if any man Yield, just like David yielded to God. When he, do you know that some of the things that happened to David, you would never, it would never happen to any of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. You add one sin, and maybe two. Yeah? Collected somebody's wife, killed the person, and then impregnated the wife, and maybe three sin. And then the Lord, because of that, Told him, I have forgiven you. Just imagine this, God. I have forgiven you, but sword will not depart from your house. I have forgiven you, but this will happen. I have forgiven you, but that will happen. To the level that even his first son, Absalom, began to arrange for the king's wife on his own roof. And he took the kingdom from him. It was only God that saved him. And now he yielded. When he saw that all things is lost, he now yielded to God that God, hmm, I give it to you. Just only you can save. As you are going to 2023, why don't you yield your troubles to God? That thing that you feel is too hard. Yield it to God. Just tell God, I want to do your will for this moment. Fix this for me. Yield to God. Yield. That's all we got to do. I wrote many things down. It's, it's useless. God said yield. Because the things that happen is... Oh, keep reading. Keep reading. Uh -huh. Now, yes. the Lord is a spirit. Because God is spirit. And uh, you know, we were told... Is it yesterday? Okay. We are still not in tomorrow. We were told yesterday that as a man, you are spirit. The body is just a carrier. Because when we die, we cannot take this flesh anywhere. It will get rotten. So, God is spirit. Uh -huh. And 
where the spirit of the Lord is, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Look at this. Let us make it simple. When you yield to God, you yield to God's spirit. God's spirit coming to you, freedom flows. Is it not simple? You yield to God. God turns to you, gives you a spirit, and then you have freedom. Freedom from suffering. Freedom from lies. Freedom from evil. Many of us, Lati, I've known some people for many years now. Since the time that I've known them, it is this issue. Osho, Ayeo, Emilio, Ogo Dile Baba, Ogo Dile Ya. I asked the person, Ido Olu Vesemi. This Jesus, you will not take it. This Jesus, you will not yield to it. You will just be coming and be burning kadu and be burning kadu and be burning kadu. Yes, the Holy Show will be selling kadu and selling kadu and selling kadu. In fact, whatever you want, I will sell it. If I have to do sell it, you want to buy, I will sell it to you. I'm not talking about this. Well, you want to buy candy, make your candy matter. I will sell it to you. This one is unsellable. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us be candid with ourselves. When you, we go to a new year, when we go to a new thing, sometimes we bring the, the old baggage, some things that is not needed into a new thing. When you mix old bad wine with new wine, it becomes bad. Uh-huh. And we all, yes. who with un unveiled faces contemplates. When you come to God, God takes the veil away. And now, you be able to see clearly. Uh -huh. Contemplate the Lord's glory. Yes. Are being transformed into his image. Then you are going to be transformed into God's image. Uh -huh. With ever increasing glory. With an ever increasing glory. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. See that God bless you. Imagine when you convert yourself to Christ. When you move yourself around and you talk to God. And God now transform you and give you an ever increasing glory. Is there somebody that wants that here? An ever increasing glory. Something that does not stop. Something that no one can say stop. So, the psalmist turned to God. And what did God do for him? Whenever you turn to God, these are the things that will happen. I want you to look at verse number 8. That's one of the things that will happen whenever you turn to God. Verse 8. Is somebody reading? One sixteen eight. One sixteen, Psalm one sixteen. The lesson. Erikani. For you, yes, O oh Lord, yes, I have delivered my soul. From God death. will deliver your soul from death in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh huh. My eyes from tears. God will deliver. You see, this twenty twenty three that we're going to. God will deliver your eyes from tears in the Amen. name of Jesus. Uh huh my feet from stumbling and in 2023 you will not stumble in the name of amen. jesus amen and what are you supposed to do that i may walk before god. god be with you in the name of jesus amen. that i may walk before the lord uh -huh. in the land of the living yes i believe yes therefore yes i said be at rest yes once more yes oh my soul yes for the lord has been good when you turn to god your soul will be at rest Amen. and god will always be good to you Amen. Amen. and something that we talk about if god gives you the grace go on our youtube page or our facebook page go and listen to today's revival and see if your life will remain the same again i tell you the truth today that if you as a person can know this God that you serve him, just know him. Know him truly. Our fathers of old, they did not even know much of this Bible. But they know the God that they serve. And it worked for them. Many of us now, we know from this, we know even Bible, we know extra Bible, we know some Bible that is not in this Bible. We know all of that. And what has it given? Because what is happening is we are mixing the world with the world. You can't mix both. You cannot. Psalm, the psalmist said, I yielded to God. I, when I was at the Lord, I said, oh Lord, 
save me. And he did that. You are running from Bela to post. You need a husband. 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 You know? But in your mindset, you've already calculated. My husband has to be six feet tall, six feet high, six, 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 six figures, all of that. And imagine, when God now sends you the real husband, and the husband is five feet six, and then you look at the husband, you say, mm -mm, this is not my own. And you begin to run after the six feet. It's good to have you guys. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you in the name of Jesus. God bless all of us in the name of Jesus. What about the men too? Eh? Don't part with this sweet, this sweet. Eh? The men. They will tell you what God has sent to you. Don't go. Don't go for the red ones, the yellow ones. Some people, even it's not even the yellow ones that is their problem. Their problem is when their eyes see, their mind is there. We call them Olo Kuro. Okay, is it Komu Olo? Okay, whatever it is. But God will help us in the name of Jesus. Uh, can you tell somebody go back into spirit? Take your mind off canal. God bless you in the name of Jesus. After God has done all of this for you, let's just imagine this year what God has done for us. What God has done for your family. Remember the time that you had that dream that you thought, oh, this is it. You could not lift your hand. You could not even call Jesus. But all of a sudden, God saved you. Remember the time that you thought you were almost going to have an accident. And the Lord just did something and you were saved. That happened to me this year. That I thought it is done. I closed my eyes and said, mm, oh shit. And all I heard was, Phew. I said, wow, still standing. I have a purpose. There are many things that God has done for you. The point is this. When God has done that for you, verse 12, what does verse 12 say? How can I repay the Lord? I can English. Okay. How can I repay the Lord? How can I repay the Lord? Uh huh. For all his goodness to me. For all his goodness to me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. Look at this one. Before you will bring your thanksgiving, you have to first of all lift up your cup of salvation. That means you have to testify. People don't understand that your testimony is supposed to attract souls. If you break my glass, you buy, you buy another one. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love you all. We need something better. Something better. Thank you, mommy. I say, mommy. I love this church. Amen. I love everyone. And God will continue to love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your testimony is supposed to attract people. But look at it. If you don't have anything to testify about, what will attract anyone? How do you have how do you not have anything to testify about when you have Jesus? Your testimony is supposed to change people. He said, How can I repay the Lord? If we come back to do again, one thousand. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. You are supposed to testify. I told us in this church. That when God do something for you, write it down. Throw it in there. Don't put your name. And sometimes, it's only in Salem, we don't do testimony time, happy time, blessing time. The reason why Salem don't do it is many. Uh, you know, we, we God bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Testimony to you, Jesus. Oh, you didn't hear me. I'm sorry. What I'm saying is sometimes, you know, you say some testimony and it becomes a, a tool for the enemy to start running after the person. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Another thing that we need to do when God has helped us is in verse number 14. And it has to do with our what? Fulfilling the vows. Can you read it, please? I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. Yes. 
in the presence of all his people. I want you to underline that. When you ask God for anything in the secret place, what, how does God do it in the secret on the open? So when you want to give testimony now, you want to give it in the secret place. God is saying no. Your thanksgiving has to be what? In the presence of the people. The reason is so that your joy can attract joy for another person. When somebody is joyful, is happy, that also can... I tell people when they're celebrating and you don't celebrate with them, how would your own come? The angels of joy is attracted to joyful people. The angels of happiness is attached to happy, happy people. Now, the angels of sorrow is attached to who? Who wants to be sorrowful here? We will never be sorrowful in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you have to rejoice with people. God bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And verse 17 says something. I will sacrifice a task given to you and call on your name. Sit down, my God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. If God has done anything for you this year, you need to do a task given to God in the presence of people. The first thing I'm telling you, in the year 2023, yield to God. Know the God that you are serving. Let this God transform your life. There's no one that missed Jesus. When Jacob met God, his life turned around. When he made the mistake, he suffered for it. We have to yield to God and let God transform our life. And once that is done, ask for God, God, the power, the passion to love you more. And to have your anointing reign in me. That was what was given. And the Lord is telling me the same thing is what we need for 2023. Many of us don't even pray for special anointing. We just walk. We wake up. We stand up. We go. Like we hone ourselves. When something happens, we come back to God. Ah, Alone. Jesus. 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 I will thank you. Chant the name of Jesus. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is what happens when you transform to God. When you are for God. Let's go to the second Bible reading as we bring this to a close. Then the uh -huh. Mark, hello. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. Yes. As clear as crystal. Yes. Flowing from the throne of God. Yes. And of the Lamb. Yes. Down the middle of the great street of the city. Go to like number three. No longer. Three. No longer will there be any cause. There will be no cause in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone that causes in 2023 will receive a triple portion of that cause in the name of Jesus. Amen. And none of those causes will come upon you in the name of Jesus. Uh-huh. The throne of God and of the Lamb yes. will be in the city. Yes. And his servants yes. will serve him. We will serve him. We and the servants will serve him. Uh -huh. They will see his face. And when we see the face, uh huh. And his name will be on their God forehead. God will put his name on our forehead. There, there will not be more night. Uh huh. They will not need the light. Just of leave them. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Once God puts his name on your forehead, do you think the Satan, do you think Satan can harm you? Not at all. That is the point that we need to get to a point of transformation. 